Hey everyone, so we are doing a lab today and specifically we are doing a lab to extract DNA from strawberry cells. So when I say extract DNA, I mean we are taking the DNA out of the nucleus of all of the strawberry cells and we will be able to actually see what the DNA looks like. If we were doing this in person, you could poke it, you could smell it can't taste it. Um, but you could actually like interact with the DNA, even though it's a microscopic molecule. So I'm going to skip the directions here because I'm walking through this with you, but essentially you should be watching these videos as we go through the different sections of the lab. So like all experiments, we are starting with a question today. And the question is, what does DNA look like? So we've seen diagrams of this double helix shape. We've seen diagrams of the four nucleotides that make up DNA, but we haven't actually seen what DNA looks like in real life. So that's what we are trying to do today. So to go through some background information, Basically, um, you can read through this on your own. However, all of the information that you need for this lab should be in your notes. So you can check your vocab notebook. You can go back and rewatch any of those videos and you can check the slide deck for this unit as well. There are some questions that you have to answer. So I'm on slide number seven right now and this is a slide that you actually have to respond to. So let's go through and talk about what these questions are asking, because like I said, this is the background information that we have to know and understand to better understand this experiment. So what is the function of DNA? The function of DNA is to store our genes and characteristics. It's kind of like our blueprint, characteristics is characteristics. There we go. Um, in which organelle is the DNA stored? The DNA is stored in the nucleus. What is the, what is the structure of a nucleotide? So we are going to be using a picture for this, but you should know that a nucleotide, nucleotide is made out of three components. It's made out of a sugar group. It is made out of a phosphate group. group. <laughs> um, and together that creates the sugar phosphate backbone. So let's put that in parentheses. Sugar phosphate backbone. And it's made out of a nitrogenous base. Nitro genus base. And that's where you get your four different nucleotides from, the A, T, C, and G. So let's find a picture and insert it in there. So I'm going to come up to insert, image, search the web. And I'm going to type in nucleotide structure. Oh, good. And so now we have some pictures popping up. Let's find an easy one to understand. All right, nothing's popping up. Let's just try nucleotide. Here's the, this one looks good. And we can make it fit in there nice and small. I'm going to put it right here next to the box. Um, but what you are seeing is here, the green part, this A, that would be your phosphate group, this would be your sugar group, and the circle would be your nitrogenous base. And so this together makes a nucleotide. All right, how are nucleotides put together to form the double helix shape of DNA? So we know that A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. And so when we're looking at a sequence of DNA, if we're looking at the template strand of DNA, 
we know that we can create the complementary strand of DNA by base pairing together. So we can also add that DNA will base pair together following some rules. And then our rules are that A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. So as a reminder, the way that I remember this is that A and T are drawn with straight lines, so they pair together. C and G are drawn with curved lines, so they pair together. All right, how does DNA structure lend itself to DNA's replication? And I just touched on that. So because of the base pair rule, given the template strand, we can create a com complementary strand of DNA. That's not how you spell it. Complementary, there you go. We can create a complementary strand of DNA. Um, yeah, that basically says, that says it all. So like I said, if we have the strand of DNA and we have the A, T, C, G, G, C, whatever, on the template strand, we can pair together. So if it says A over here, it says T over here. If it says C over here, it says G over here because we know what pairs with what. All right, so there is your background information. So let's take a quick look at our hypothesis. And again, this is another page that you have to fill in. So I'm on slide number nine right now. And this is an if then statement. We're kind of just predicting what we think DNA will look like. So if strawberry DNA is extracted, which it will be, then it will look like, and it is your job to fill in what you think DNA will look like. So what color will it be? Um, will it look wet? Will it look dry? Will it be in a certain shape? That's for you to fill in in this green box right here. So I'm going to pause this video here. And the next video is going to start with the materials section. And you will also watch how we are going to actually extract the DNA from the strawberry cells.